know, when I see movies like Deadstream and now films like this, it really kind of puts this whole thing in perspective. Baby! I'm gonna literally kill someone this weekend. What's up? We've arrived at famous actor Bryce Levy's monster home. Get ready for three days inside the belly of the beast. Mean Spirit, a new film that just popped up on demand in all these various outlets right down here. And uh, I was asked to review this by the good people at First Names Films. And I didn't know what I was getting into. This is a film that entirely snuck up on me. And sometimes, especially when it comes to horror, the best kinds are the kind that sneak right up on you. And I can definitely say uh, the comparison I just made with Deadstream is very ap accurate. Because much like Deadstream, this is a found footage film that also delves into the turbulent personalities that you find in the world of social media and influencer culture and, of course, YouTuber culture. Only where Deadstream is a much more focused film, focusing on one imbecile in a haunted house, Mean Spirited, on the other hand, goes the complete opposite direction by actually having a full ensemble cast, which is in many ways a poignant character study to go with it being a horror comedy. The story goes like this. The amazing Andy is a YouTuber whose whole shtick is practical jokes. I mean, and as the name of his show is, Mean Spirited. You know, the kind that basically only the lowest common denominator kind of people really do enjoy because they themselves are just as big of an asshole as Andy himself. And he has a big old entourage of people who he kind of, even though he won't say it outright, kind of subconsciously wants to believe he's better than and keeps them around because he perceives them as weaker than him. And so he drags them all along on an ultimate revenge bid. You see, a long time ago, he had a best friend named Bryce where... They've been friends since they were age of four, but uh, but unfortunately one of Andy's pranks goes horribly wrong. Afterwards, their friendship dissolved and Bryce ended up becoming a big old Hollywood movie star, but they wind up getting invited to Bryce's house one weekend. Now, Andy kind of feels like he was abandoned by Bryce, that the success that Bryce ended up getting should have been shared between the two. And he feels that because Bryce abandoned Andy, he sabotaged him. But of course, Andy doesn't want to admit that he's a failure. He's going to take pride in his 30,000 followers. I wish I could say that I feel superior to him. Seven fucking years. Anyway, so Andy decides to bring together his entire entourage to go to Bryce's house for a for what seems to be a big old bury the hatchet weekend. I can't believe I just said bury the hatchet because there's actually kind of a really funny moment involving a buried hatchet. But it turns out Andy has a big old plan to do a vlogumentary in an attempt to smear Bryce and try to make him look not as amazing as he made himself out to be to the world. Only when they get there, the tables almost immediately start getting turned against Andy and very gradually, through circumstances both mysterious and in many cases not so mysterious, the entire entourage starts turning against Andy. The stuff that happens afterwards is the kind of stuff I'm not going to spoil because that's the stuff you definitely need to watch when you jump on this movie. Voila, I got booze. A lot of it is about the idea that when shit goes wrong in your life, everyone always feels the need to blame something else. No one really wants to take responsibility for the fact that they themselves might not be the best of people. And the main character who we're focusing on is someone who keeps wanting to blame everyone else for the fact that he is a fuck up and he is pretty much a horrible individual and many times he preys on everyone around him to make himself feel better. As these stories tend to go, you always expect him to have like some third act revelation that makes him want to change his his person, but refreshingly you think he will like at that zero second, but in the end, now 
he still pretty much stays the same old asshole. This and stuff like this is the reason why I love horror. With every other genre, everyone expects a happy ending and everyone expects you know, people to actually be profoundly changed by the events that go on. Horror is the one genre where it is perfectly in the spirit of it that your characters, some, yes, can be profoundly changed on, with the right circumstances. Meanwhile, on the other side, you got the people whose assholery is so deeply ingrained in their being that it's almost impossible, despite all the weak promises they try to make to themselves. Even though I said spoilers, I'm still trying to be vague, because again, I want you to watch this one. Now, of course, I mentioned that this is a found footage film, and how does it compare to the aforementioned Deadstream? Again, this one, it, in lieu of the fact that this is about another YouTuber, this one, again, goes a drastically different way in its presentation. The thi and actually, I would even say this one does it in a way that actually kind of aids in the escalating dread, but also does a wonderful job in the progression of the story. This one actually utilizes a lot of those really garish, very obnoxious transitions that you very commonly find in YouTubers, like, th like those pretty boys with the awful peroxide hair and those assholes who take photos of people who are committing suicide in a forest. Fuck you. You can tell this film did its homework in terms of satirizing YouTuber culture because a lot of the transitions of this film are very much akin to the kind of things you would find in a slew of you know, obnoxious YouTuber videos. And it really aided, not just in moving the story along, but also knowing the fact that this is all the product of Andy really does kind of lend a kind of wonderful lens into his character because of how obnoxious uh, his endeavors are, how suffocating he is to his friends all around them. Now, his friends are not just appendages of this character. All of his friends all around him, yeah, Tom, you have Nikki, you have Joey. Um, the only character I would say is a little bit of a cartoon character is Do. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. <laughs> it's flush. He's pretty much the classic dude bro schlub, you know, basically like Seth Rogen if he never succeeded, who seems to have an aversion to, you know, doing up the button on the bottom of his shirt. Why the fuck? That would drive me nuts. Why? But even then, there's moments with Dew where, as the story progresses, actually get pretty creepy. And immediately you see the tide start shifting the second they meet Bryce, played by Jeff Ryan, the director. And he just seems to be a really chill, really cool, very zen kind of guy. And the thing I love throughout the course of the movie is that you see him turning all the characters against Andy, and he doesn't even have to do it through deception. He does it through just pure honesty. He doesn't really go through any kind of monologues or anything. He just used simple suggestion to prompt them all to look at Andy and go, God, fuck you, buddy. And I was loving how the balance of, how you could see the balance of power gradually shifting. And because this is a found footage film, you really do feel like a fly in the wall as you're watching uh, this power shift happen. Funny enough, the horror element of this, while as great as it is and as fun as it is, wasn't the aspect of the movie I found the most enjoyable. I just loved the psychodrama that was unfolding you know, be between the balance power between these two friends now turned rivals. I love how every time Andy tries to get one up on him, it ends up blowing up back in his face to the point where he himself starts having to look into himself. And the more times he tries to get one up on him, he ends up alienating everyone around him. And that, that was just, you know, absolute, hmm close to that. Fortunately, it does not fall into the trap of other found footage films where it's all doesn't do that at all. Thank God. In most found footage films, you know exactly who's filming. You know who the person is who's chronicling the whole thing. And many times knowing that, you are consistently left to wonder, again, why the fuck are you still filming when you're in the middle of a horrific scenario? This is the problem I had with Blair Witch. This is the problem I had with uh, Cloverfield. This is definitely the problem I had with the goddamn Outwaters that just came out recently. Again, because Andy is hell-bent to try to get any kind of visual evidence of what a horrible person Bryce is, he is hell-bent to film as much of what is going on as possible. But even more so, when things start going south and as the, as the, as the scales of power start to weigh against Andy, all the people holding the cameras are now pointing it in a different direction. And there's many points in the movie where I was actually going, wait a minute, I'm losing track, who's filming? And there was a part of me thinking, oh, that's a bit sly, but then I was like, wait a minute, what if this is deliberate? What if we're deliberately not supposed to know who's filming? And I immediately go, that's kind of brilliant. 
that you don't know if it's someone who's against everybody or someone who's just trying to get some kind of ambient shots. You don't know. And it plays with your uncertainty. It all culminates in a spectacular third act, one that I felt immensely satisfied, uh, particularly when it comes to the epilogue. And there is a mid credits uh, stinger. Definitely stick around for it. Uh, but the ending, I was immensely satisfied, principally because it does not betray the characters. It feels right. It felt perfect. I laughed so hard because I was like, this is the only way this sucker could have ended. And it even did a fun little uh, nod to the idea that this sucker was over before it even started. And don't take that as a dissuasion to watch the movie. In fact, actually, I'm going to be vague enough to prompt you to say, how is that even possible? Because it is. And they play it. And it's so great. And I'm also going to add another thing to whet your appetites. It has the funniest half-assed exorcism I've seen in a while. So you got that going for you, which is nice. So yes, Mean Spirited is currently streaming on these uh, platforms down here below. I will also have them in the uh, description on the video so you can find them there. And thank you so much to First Names Films for bringing this one to my attention and I'm so glad you came to me and I'm so glad that I got a chance to review it for you. So, are there any other horror films you want me to tackle? Some that you feel deserve some kind of attention? Leave it all in the comments below and for more horrific content on Narcotic Casserole, simply like, share, subscribe, click, thou shalt be served. Mm -hmm.